On today's show, we travel to Junk Lovers Paradise, rooms full of collectible outdoor treasures, if you're willing to dig. The magic of Minnesota's spring migration begins on the river. Good news for those who love birds. And the sweet sounds of spring in Walter's special sugar camp. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura, Millie, and I welcome you to today's episode. If you like old outdoor stuff, boy did we find a treasure chest for you. Yeah, think of the junk bonanza as dumpster diving, where it becomes a badge of honor. <laughs> You may have heard, one person's trash is another, well, you know the rest. And here's the proof. I'm a first timer, he's a professional. Whatever I see, there's a lot of good ideas, so it's fun to go see what's new and buy what you like, I guess. Jewelry hats, yeah, fun things for the ladies. Enjoy it. Even though I enjoy it, she's gonna enjoy this, I know she will. Welcome to the Junk Bonanza. Since 2006, junk has come in and treasure has gone out here at Canterbury Park Expo Center. Just look around. Bonanza is right. A passion of ours. A lot of people are into the summer activities with the different boats and boat motors. So different lamps and lamp shades. And a lot of lake people around here, so it's a really good Really good sell for us. So. Yeah, the rooster, I started making sculptures out of barbed wire and bed strings and what other, other kind of wires I could find, and that's how I started doing Junk Bonanza. So we turn things into tables and whatever we can find that's cool to make it into a light fixture. What I'd like, Sean can make it happen, so that works out good. This is a reclaimed bowling alley top on old industrial arts lockers, so you've got storage, and then we put them on wheels so they can go into different spots and good look to them. And this is a table that Sean made, and it's got a, a well pump. We always try to put a bottle opener on it, so it works good for different things. Oh my, in the eye of the beholder, right? If the coffee was wine, I would be doing that. You know, I would drink coffee though. I do like this one though. Are we having drinks or are we having drinks? That one, I need to dress accordingly. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot going on here today. There's, there's a lot. This is one of our three time a year vintage sales. It started as a garage sale in Long Lake about 2000 or so. And then it just grew and grew and then I took it over a couple of years ago. We uh, have about 2,500 to 3,000 people in here a day looking for things that they love. And there is an enormous range from glassware to duck decoys and everything in between. You know, dumpster diving is a, is a term of honor here. In other words, some folks here collect old stuff with the idea it can be sold as a treasure to somebody else. And it works. And there are things, I've been doing this since I was 18 years old, and every kind of time I come to this show, there's a thousand things I've never seen before. People look at it and say, you know, it's a bunch of junk. But I would say this, this show in particular, we probably have things that are a little more finished. Once it starts, it's a, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> the guy in the overalls will agree to that. These are so amazing. I like them. They were so well done. I grew up with collecting. My parents were collectors and in the antique business, so... I don't know, I just, I feel like I kind of inherited it. It's what I've known, but I just, uh, I don't know, I, I love things with stories and collectibles and things that have memories attached to them. So we've got, um, I brought this fireplace, which, you know, I thought was kind of fun. It kind of helps set the stage a little bit. I love the old water skis. I think these are always fun to use, great to decorate with. I mean, kind of that instant memory maker, if you will. Ah, uh, yes, memories. A memory isn't junk. What are we looking at here? You know, this is one of my favorite pieces. This is a clipper of 
minnow bucket, but it's made for ice fishing. And the way you can tell that is because it's got a little heater. It came with its own heater. You put some heat, you know, lamp oil in it, stuck it inside there in a special compartment. When you were out on the ice, it kept your minnows from freezing to death in there. My, my, after browsing vintage skis, old duck decoys, old art, you name it, I think I found my own junk. Uh, I mean treasure. These are French Bulldogs, are they not? Yes, they are. And I own a French Bulldog. I may need to take these home. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Star Bank, Crush City, and by Voyager Lodge and Houseboats. Mother Nature is always the best judge of when spring has actually sprung. It's that time of year where outdoor enthusiasts head outdoors to get a glimpse of their favorite feathered friend. Sure sounds like spring in Minnesota. But today, the birds aren't the only ones on the river. Birders, as they call themselves, migrate too. They really do enrich our lives. You know, just standing here this morning with the, the, the other bird watchers, um, we all just enjoy seeing these. This is always the highlight of, of our year is the spring migration. Area wildlife biologist Stephen Winter never misses. We are at the Wildlife Observation Deck at Weaver Bottoms, and this is, this is a deck located on the Weaver Landing on the Minnesota side of the river and, and right by Highway 61. It is a special place, yeah, yeah. And people have known about Weaver Bottoms for, for the hunting, the fishing, the trapping for decades and decades. It's, the Weaver Bottoms is a very kind of famous place along the upper Mississippi River because so many birds stop here on their way north. This is an excellent place in the spring. There's still a lot of open water for the birds, so that we are seeing tens of thousands of birds out here today. A literal melting pot of migration. Right now out there, there's a whole bunch of ringneck ducks and canvasbacks, and then I I've seen just a few golden eye. And those are the divers that I'm seeing. What you see a lot of are the golden eye hooded merganser hybrids, which we call hood eyes, but I, I find them every year too, so. Well, right above us is a red-winged blackbird, but behind us, I can hear the swans. Meanwhile, down river. All right, let's go find some ducks. I could do this every day. Craig Machholz also shows up to observe and to capture. Everybody heads north, and I'm always loading up my boat and headed to the river. We are in between La Crosse, Wisconsin and La Crescent. There's a huge, what I call a backwater area, and it's all of these little chutes and cuts that run through the timber. This time of the year really attracts a lot of waterfowl. Where I'm sitting back here, it actually works out pretty good because I'm behind the weeds and anything that's landing right in on me makes for a great shot. No matter how big your lens is, if you want the detail, the birds still have to be relatively close. Oh, right there. I absolutely love waterfowl photography. You can sit out there all day and take thousands and thousands of shots, and you get home, you sit down at your computer, and you're scrolling through, and it's like garbage, 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 and then boom, right there in front of you, you get that one shot. And honestly, that's, that's what keeps me coming back. The Upper Mississippi River Refuge has just tons of great waterfowl habitat. Home to such a wonderful spring view. 
it's a pretty healthy river up here, which we're very, very blessed and fortunate to, to be able to live in this area. Exactly why we say, welcome back, spring birds. Minnesota sure is happy to see you again. Still ahead, we hit the sugar shack with a guy who knows just how sweet this spring treat can be. But first, a visit to one of Minnesota's most profound museums. Closed captioning provided by Leech Lake Area Tourism. Minnesota's Bell Museum helps both kids and adults explore right here in the Twin Cities. It is a legacy more than 100 years strong. 238,900. That's how many miles the moon is from the Earth. But the visitors to the Bell Museum in St. Paul need only pay a few dollars to travel to the moon. And what's really great about the moon is that we all see it. See it? You can't miss a 21 meter moon in the main lobby. These are real images of the moon that are stitched together. Even those driving down Larpenter and Cleveland Avenue got a view. The Museum of the Moon exhibit recently passed through the U of M Natural History Museum, allowing visitors an up-close look at the fifth largest satellite in our solar system. So tonight's event is called After Hours Night Moves. The moon was part of the Bell Museum's year of the Apollo celebration, marking the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. Our building is really a reflection of Minnesota inside and out. There's been a lot to celebrate at the museum as they recently moved into their new $79 million home. Well, one thing that you'll see when you come into the new museum uh, is how much natural light there is. We also added another really big feature, which is our woolly mammoth diorama. It's our first new diorama in over 50 years. We have over a million specimens from both uh, Minnesota and the region. If you want to see all of Minnesota on display, you can tour the entire state in one visit to the Bell Museum. And, uh, maybe... Visitors on this night were treated to a special guest from Voyager's Wolf Project. It's a real honor to be part of After Hours and Night Moves. Joseph Bump spoke about the secret lives of wolves in the summer. Yeah, the Voyager's Wolf Project is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota and Voyager's National Park. Their goal? We're focused on what they're doing approximately from April to October, how they're raising their pups, how they're making a living when it comes to prey, um, and sharing that with people. So we're using technology like GPS collars, technology like remote cameras, and combining them um, to bring pictures and video and the science uh, to people. Night vision cameras caught the wolves fishing. Yes, wolves fish. And wolves in the past have exhibited certain uh, fishing behaviors, if you will, hunting these white suckers. Bump says wolves are known to fish for salmon, but not necessarily freshwater fish. It's known that fish were in their diets, but capturing that on video um, was really interesting. The night videos range from fishing to taking care of pups. You cannot walk in this museum and not be impressed with that exhibit. It is super cool. All these videos took place under a night sky. The moon watching from far above. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Flow Docks and Lifts, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing.
Up next, we head to the Crow River, where an often snowy trail leads to a very tasty spring tradition. But what starts as a sugar bush ends up in some of the fanciest Twin Cities taverns. Spring reunion for Walter Noctegal looks like this. A lonely trail leads to the sweetest of spring camps. But there's always a spring snow to remind you it's winter. Nature's little gift. Nice and clean, crystal clear. The earth is kind of waking up. Now you're out here in the woods and you get to watch all the critters come back. You're here watching it unfold in front of you. And it is such a blessing to be able to, to enjoy it. You just tap it in, hang it, and then I just pucker it down so it's actually dripping in the bag. You can see here, one, two, three, four. So we've been tapping these almost 50 years. An act started alongside his dad, right here, way back when. There we go, we got fire. In fact, the old evaporator still sits in camp. So does Walter's dad. Yeah, he loved making sugar, holy cow. Bud Noctegal's picture, a perpetual reminder of what fires this family and this tradition. He used to love stoking the fire. Best dad I could have ever had. I got pretty lucky. So when this is going, I've got my own little oven. I can put Cornish game in, in there, and it's smoked and seared to perfection in about 12 minutes. move from this pan to this pan. So you've always got two pans boiling. The last one I call Peter. Peter Pan. <laughs> it's usually a smoky boil, and that's really what the flavor is sometimes the best. It's really clear syrup, but it's got that smokiness. Same story with the snacks. How's that for dinner? I don't know if I can do any better than that. Life right now is pretty good out here. Yes, Walter loves this syrup and this lifestyle, but what he does with it, that might be the icing. So my favorite thing to make is the old fashioned, which I incorporate my maple syrup with. It's not just for breakfast anymore. This is where I craft my, my career and my cocktails. See, Walter mixes up drinks professionally. Been doing so for decades. He uses one key ingredient from camp. Can't even imagine how many drinks I've made over 35 years. A little heavier on this because of the tartness of the citrus. When you see the maple syrup against the frothy glass, it really kind of makes a nice touch. These are more of a craft cocktail, old fashioned. This actually has probably made me a better relatable bartender because I have many people that come in and they're fascinated by the stories of the maple syrup. If I can teach somebody something that day as well, then that's a bonus. Walter's best kept recipe revealed right here. It's a pretty simple one, not, not rocket science. Tea into a cup or whatever, and then hot concentrate. Just let it steep for a couple minutes and you got goodness. Yep, sweet sap. It's the base. And then all of a sudden we started drinking sap and it was like, I stopped bringing stuff to drink because that's all I would ever drink is just right out of the bag. Lessons on mixing it up in life. Walter's story started long ago with a single drip. And you can see that proof hanging from a tree in a bag and the sweetness within. It's, it's pretty awesome to be a part of that. These are days you kind of live for. This is, makes all the hard work worth it. Definitely a gift. 
purely decadent. The cocktails look delicious. Well, that about does it for us. We hope you join us next week. In the meantime, remember to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.